In this video, we're going to be discussing casting and string manipulation. Casting is pretty simple. We've seen it before. If we want to change a data type, we just use a built-in function from Python to do that. Now, we've had this issue where we take an input from a user and it always comes back as a string. And sometimes we might want to use that for a calculation. So if we did answer is equal to uh, input, and we can say um, how many cars do you have? And we can print answer and we can print the type to the terminal. So now if we have to run this code, we can say how many cars do you have? You hit one and it comes back as a string and one. So for humans, it doesn't really matter, but the program it does, you can see it comes back as a string. So we want to change this. What we can do is we can type in int here and run the code again. How many cars do you have? One. And now the program is seeing it as one. So if we had to run calculations, it'll be fine because the program sees it as an integer. But now what if we had um, a float as an example? Maybe you have 1.5 cars, who knows? Now, uh, if we had to run this and say 1.5 is an answer, it'll break because the built-in function int doesn't know what to do. But if we had to remove this and run it again and then do 1.5, you see, it's a string still, even though we see 1.5. So we would have to change this to a float just like that. So instead of using int, we use float. Pretty simple and straightforward. How many cars do you have? 1.5. And it'll come back as a float. The program actually sees it correctly. Okay. So now what if we want a Boolean value? Note that we have a question, how many cars do you have? Let's, um, let's just change this to bool here. Now, it will take whatever we give it and change to a bool. And let's run it again. How many cars do you have? Let's say one. Hit enter, and it comes back boolean and true. Notice that we actually see true. Now, if we had to run this again and we typed in anything and hit enter, it still comes back as boolean because it has a value. What happens if we don't put anything? It still comes back as a bool, but this time it comes back as false. It's very important to know these distinctions between what happens um, when we cast a data type. Now, um, let's see, what else can we experiment with here? Of course, just to show you string. Uh, in fact, we know it always comes back as string. So what if we say one is the answer here, and we say answer is now equal to a string. So we notice we do str, we don't type the whole word. And we can use answer again and run it again. And yes, it's a string. It's no longer an integer. To prove to you that it was an integer, we can run this again, and you can see it was an integer. So there's only four casting things that you probably would need. And uh, if you need any more, a quick Google will give you an answer. But it's so simple to do this. It's very important to note that you can do it and when to do it. So those are the important things. I hope that helps you with casting. Take a break. See if you can do it. Experiment with it. And then we can move on to uh, string manipulation. So let's take a look at string manipulation. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at string concatenation. Now don't let that confuse you. String concatenation just means joining. So if we did name equal to Tom and we printed name, we get Tom. Okay. But what if we had this as first? name, last name equal to Ford. And we wanted to print this out. So the first thing we'll do is first name. Cool, we have Tom. And if you're familiar with the print um, function, we can do last name. It does print it out. But the reason is because you can see that the print function supports multiple arguments. And that's just the way it works. You see it adds the space for us. Now, if we wanted to concatenate them, we could do something like this. Okay. Say, for example, we wanted to do a full name as a variable. 
So we can do first name plus last name. Now, I know you might be confused by this because when we last saw a plus, it was doing math. And that's true. It still can do that. It's an operator that does that. But when it comes to strings, it joins them together. So if we had to print full name, you can see it has taken Tom Ford and joined it together. No spaces involved. Uh, to make it a little bit clearer, what's been what's happened is this. So that's all that's happened. We've taken two strings and we've concatenated them. Now this can become a very useful tool for you because let's see if we could put that back to full name. So you see we have first name, okay? If we want to present this to the user and we don't want, you know, I mean, we do want a space here, what we don't want to be doing is this. That works, okay? But is this now an accurate representation of first name? No, it's not because there's an empty space in there and you don't want to do the same thing here for last name. It works, but it's not best practice because you want your data to be clean and you want it to make sense. So full name can then be first name plus open. Uh, you can either use double quotes or single quotes to represent a string, just like we did up here. We can add a space and we can add another plus and hit run. And you can see we now have a space. The reason for this is because we have concatenated strings, first name, empty space, and last name. So for you to understand the next thing, what you need to understand is how Python sees a string. Okay. So <laughs> as humans, we see this, it's like, okay, cool. It is a word that's made up of three letters. Okay. So Python sees it as a string made up of multiple characters. And similar to a list, if we want to reference each of those characters, we can do. So if we take first name, we take first name and then reference the first character. So the first character T by using the index of zero, just like we did with a list. So if we had to re, uh, run this code again, you notice we get T. Remember, just like lists that started at zero, this is the same. Strings will start at zero. If we had to do one, we get O. It looks weird, but it's the character O, 2, and then M. Okay, so very simple. And you can even do useful things with this. If, for example, the data set that you had access to has multiple customers with first name and last name, but what if you only wanted to print the initial of these customers to the screen? We can do something like this. We can say initials equal to first name. And of course, we want to reference the first, which is one T. We can then use string concatenation. And we can use a dot plus last name and again zero. And we can print initials. Let's run this. And good, we have T dot F. So you can see here, the more we learn about string manipulation, we can actually do some really useful things with it. We know now how Python sees a string. But what if we want to search that string to bring back a specific part, part of it, so certain characters? We can do this in Python. We can say player equal to winter green. And let's say winter green has a ranking. So if we look at the string, we can see the gamer tag or the player name, and we can see his ranking of 8998. Now, what if we just wanted to bring back that player rank? Let's take a look. If we did player and we did one and we printed this out to the screen and we ran this, it comes back with I because if you remember, it's taking not zero, but one. So it comes back with I. Okay. Now, what if we did this? If we put a colon in front of it, let's see what happens. It comes back with W, so it comes back with the first letter in the string. So why is that? The colon here is very important to note that on the left hand side, so it says if you put it here, start from the left hand side and bring us back the first character. So if we did two, it doesn't bring us uh, N, it brings us W N I. So we started at the left, okay, and it's counting characters and it's returning it to us. If we did minus one, okay, 
So it starts from the left, it goes all the way to the end and drops the last character off. Okay, so if we did the last four, so it goes from the left all the way and drops the last four. That's still not what we want. But what if we put one and then put a colon? What happens? If we run this, so it starts from the right this time and it goes all the way and takes off the first letter. Okay, what happens if we did minus one? And we did that, it brings back eight. Now we're getting somewhere. So we want this player rank. We know that, okay, there's four letters or four characters, and we did four. Okay. And great, we got our player rank. And that's perfect. And that shows you how we can take back certain letters of characters from the string. Now, we know that 8998 is a four digit number. But what we don't know is, could it keep going further? Could it have more characters? So now if we round this code, it doesn't give back the correct player rank because we assumed that it only has four numbers in the player rank. Now, a better way of doing this is just further string manipulation. We can do this. If we said player and press dot. Now you remember with lists and dictionaries it was the same thing. When we have the variable that represents the list of dictionary, in this case, it's a string. When you hit dot, it brings us all these various methods that can, we can use to play around with. So if we did lower as an example, and if we had to print this out, notice it brings everything to lowercase. So the W was uh, uppercase. I think we have upper, and we did this. Look at that, now everything's uppercase. So you have some useful methods there, and we want lit. Okay, so now player rank. Um, I think we need to make sure we do this. So yes, okay. So we are going to split the string on a specific character. So you can see that hash is the defining character, character here that says this is the name and then this is the number. So we want everything after that hash because we know that's the player rank. So maybe we can say player and we split it because you can see it's outputted a list for us. So if we did player like this, okay, player rank. So if we did player again, it's still the list. But what if we did player name is equal to player and the first index in the list, player rank is equal to player and this. And then we could say player name remember we're going to use string concatenation here player name and then we can do player rank and we can have player rank let's see if this works perfect so you can see we have player name winter green cool player rank and he's rank it now we're not we're not being specific with it it'll take anything so if we did i don't know that was his rank it's taking his rank. So that string manipulation, you can see there's so many different things we can do here with it. It becomes very powerful. Uh, from just a string, we've now been able to display data to say, this is the player's name, this is their rank. So try it out, pause, this. you need to get this right. Pause this video or stop, don't go to the next one. Just practice this and make sure you understand it. I hope it helps.